What's up guys, Headphones in here, back with another film franchise review, and in this case it's the four film franchise for Indiana Jones. So I wanted to rewatch the films to see how they hold up, and as it turns out in my browsing to see if they're streaming anywhere, all four films are currently streaming on Netflix. So I decided to watch them in event order rather than release order to see how the story progresses, see how it holds up see if uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was in fact or is in fact the worst film of the franchise and all of that so I did watch them as Temple of Doom, Raiders of the Lost Ark, um, The Last Crusade, and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and overall the films do hold up and while um, Crystal Skull is probably the lesser of the films it holds mostly on par with um, Temple of Doom as far as what they did with mixing archaeology with culture but it deviates from that and goes a little bit too far to the extreme as far as the whole aspect of aliens and interdimensional travel and all of that um, mostly because what they did in the first three films at least held to some extent with um, known religion and mythology and archaeology and left some of the extra mysteries um, up to your imagination and to what you might expect and what you might have learned over the years as far as those cultures go. But when it gets to uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, you do have, the, or they do ask a valid question of how the culture um, and society of the time managed to build aqueducts and irrigations and society and transportation and roads and all of that. But then they basically turn into an episode of Ancient Aliens or whatever show alien shows on the History Channel and basically turn into al whoa, aliens because they have an alien skull, a spaceship, interdimensional travel, and all this other sort of stuff. Whereas even in um, uh, The Last Crusade, while they are on the quest for the Holy Grail and they do meet the knight who's a ghost, that could have been at least chalked up to some sort of hallucination, some sort of trickery. The bridge that was there could have been hidden by some sort of um, reflectiveness or some trickery of the eye. But at least they left all of that, all of those aspects hidden. And while it could have been a whole budgeting thing to tie it into the real world, at least they brought it like for the first part of the whole quest for the whole on the for the holy grail with the whole saw blades it was a bit of mach actual machinery that could have been tr that can be tripped by wires for the second part they have the holes in the ground to that falls into a deep cavern and things like that so for that the, the, you do have to suspend some a little bit of disbelief but, but with the uh, crystal skull they Take it. They took it that extra step to um, add the aliens and the spaceship and all of that. So, to me, I think they, it could have been done. It could have been left without the um, whole alien skull and the spaceship. They could have been introduced to some area, kind of like in, um, uh, or do a mixing of the quest for the holy for the holy grail and temple of doom where they have the the society still existing and performing some sort of ritual to power some sort of device or create keep a device in harmonic resonance like they like they explained in the skull and leave it at that and that would have made kingdom of the crystal skull that a little bit better of a movie or even have a skull where they have to keep uh ancient human head in perfect resonance in order for them to keep their knowledge otherwise they lose it and that would have worked out a little bit better so I think overall as far as the films go um, The Last Crusade is probably the slightly better film followed by Raiders of the Lost Ark because of, with the whole Raiders of the Lost Ark it goes back, it, it can be all chalked up to if Indiana Jones didn't do anything the Nazis would have found the on one hand, the Nazis would have found the um, um, device and they would have killed themselves off because of the natural powers that it has. But on the flip side, if Indiana Jones didn't do anything, then they wouldn't have found it. He would, Then they would have kept digging in the wrong place. They would have kept going after Marion to find the medallion, but they could have just as easily hidden it away in some safety deposit box or put it in some place where she doesn't know where it is, buried in the sand, um, or even find the 
room that they did and um, buried in there and no one would have found it anyways so uh, yeah, although that they would have probably although the bad guys would have kept digging and maybe found it eventually but they could have buried it somewhere else just as easily so overall and then I want to say Temple of Doom is probably the third one um, the premise of it was close enough I mean once you get into the whole ritualistic part of um, pulling a uh, heart out of the human body, the torture and um, submitting um, people into the fire in order to keep your powers and hypnotizing people and then eventually having to hypnotize the whole world to take over the world and succumb to your power. Um, I mean, by a stretch of the imagination, it could work and um, you could do that. I mean, eventually you're going to have a good guy to stop them or you're going to find people who are not so easily entranced and um, try and stop you so um, that's kind of why I put Tem um, Temple of Doom as the third film although it is the it does introduce us better to Indiana Jones as a character early on even though I want to say in uh, now I forgot if it was in the Raiders of the Lost Ark or the Last Crusade where we learn about Indiana where we learn about Indiana Jones fear of snakes but um, we get a little bit of his youth and his doing the right things and uh, wanting to submit artifacts to the museum and things like that. We get that bit of backstory as well. So overall, that's kind of my ordering. Even though if you watch them in order, it does continue the storyline the best. Um, Raiders of the oh, sorry, um, the Last Crusade is probably the best film. Raiders of the Lost Ark uh, close as a close second, Temple of Doom third, and Crystal Skull um, last just because Crystal Skull added an element that did not need to be added and if it wasn't added would have actually made it a better film um, just because they really only needed to follow the template of Temple of Doom but exchange the cultures for um, Hinduism into Mayanism and you would have gotten a similar result and it would have been an equally good film and an easy way to pass along the torch from Harrison Ford and in this case Shia LaBeouf but now that we do have the Han Solo film um, um, Aaron Aldridge I want to say the guy who played Solo in Han Solo in the Solo movie we could, they could they should make the Indiana Jones films with him just because they have a guy who's um who could take his place. Yeah, granted, he doesn't really look much like Harrison Ford, but at least you could have an Indiana Jones character and keep that tying factor together for the film since Harrison Ford did play Indiana Jones and Han Solo. So that's all there is for this review. I just want to give my quick take on it. The films overall are good. They work well in the era that they're in. Um, I didn't really get into some of the trivia and stuff like that as far as... Um, the things that didn't exist in the time, like I think in one shot in one of the movies, um, someone's wearing jeans, someone's glasses, or was wearing a watch that never didn't exist in that time. Um, the iconic shot of um, Indiana Jones shooting the guy in the market was because he had a fever, or he had, um, um, uh, I think, a fever or something. He was sick or something, so that scene actually ended up working. Um, because he was not feeling all that great, so um, there is that. But overall, the films stand out, stand, work well on their own if you watch them in the in their events order rather than um, release order. So um, overall, for good films, entertaining films. Even Crystal Skull was a good film. It's really the last maybe half an hour or so of the film, maybe 40 minutes, that doesn't really work. And once they introduce the skull, I mean... They could have even take, kept the skull and re remade it or used it as a human skull and how the human uh, mind has evolved over time without all of the rituals that they were doing and take it from there. So that's kind of all there is for that. So I'm not going to fault the whole movie for 30 or 40 minutes of a film that I didn't like, but it definitely could have been a lot better. So that's all there is for this review. So... Um, as we head into October 2020, I wanted to I figure I'd do um, more of a themed set of episodes for the month. So um, I've currently scheduled four films to review um, for uh, horror, as for part of like horror film reviews for the month of October. So um, currently, the scheduled films in this order are going to be 
um, 2005's Alone in the Dark, followed by um, Doom, followed by Resident Evil, and finally rounded out with Silent Hill. So you might notice that the two common themes, the first obviously is that they're all um, some sort of horror films, but they're all loosely based on video games of the same name. So um, three of those films are streaming on Amazon Prime. I'm not sure where Doom is streaming as of yet, but um, the current plan is to watch them um, to see how they hold up compared to the uh, video games. Um, I think the and at least and loosely based on the video games, it's going to be more of actually. Sorry, I take that back. It's going to be more of reviewing the films and how they stand out on their own. But um, I will try to also introduce a little bit or re- discuss how it might relate to the video games a little bit to see if there's any commonality, similarity, or if they do a better or worse job than the video games that they're based off of. So that's all there is for this review. So if you want to get in touch with me, provide your feedback or views or comments or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website's PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.